Welcome back to Movie Shortens. Today, we are going to introduce a 1990 American Western monster horror comedy called Tremors. It is about a small town called Perfection that is invaded by a strange underground creature. What is this unseen creature and where does it come from? Be aware, there are spoilers. The movie opens on our two heroes, Valentine, Val, McKee, and Earl Bassett, who are working out in the wilderness. On their way back to town, they make a short detour to go over and meet the new girl in town, Rhonda Liebeck, a graduate student conducting seismology tests in the area. She asks Val and Earl if anyone is drilling or blasting because she notices some strange geological signals around here. They tell her they will ask the locals and let her know later. Val and Earl are handymen living in a small town called Perfection, Nevada, an isolated settlement in the high desert east of the Sierra Nevada mountains. They talk to some of the other residents in the general store before heading off to their next job. Back in the desert, Rhonda is hard at work monitoring her equipment when some mysterious creature beneath the desert begins following her as she packs up to leave. After doing a few more dirty and boring jobs, Val and Earl eventually leave for Bixby, the nearest town for their new life chapter. As they leave, they discover the dead body of Edgar Deems, a fellow resident who is sitting up high on the electrical tower, still holding on to the tower's cross beams and his rifle. They brought the poor man's body to the local doctor, Jim Wallace. The town's doctor determines that Edgar died of dehydration, apparently having been too afraid of something to climb down. Later that day, a shepherd called Fred is taking care of his farm, only to realize his sheep begin to be horrified by some unseen force. The dummy is dragged down to the ground, confusing the older man. As Fred turns his back on, an unseen creature kills him and his flock of sheep. On the way out of perfection, Val and Earl discover the farm is in a mess. They call Fred, but no reply is heard. As the two see Fred's hat on the ground, they pick it up and find his severed head. They believe that a serial killer is on the loose. The friends immediately drive back to town to warn the residents. En route, two construction workers ignore Val and Earl's warning. The two workers don't believe and continue to work on the road. Just when one of the workers is using a chisel into the pavement, he is attacked by something underneath. The wire wraps around the worker's legs and drags him along. The other worker comes to save his friend, but it's too late. They are killed by the same creature causing a rock slide. That night, Dr. Wallace and his wife are packing up for the trip to Bixby. While talking, there is a sudden blackout. Wallace takes out a flashlight to check the generator, but for some unknown reason, it disappears. Just then, the generator springs off the ground and falls right in front of the two. Wallace is then dragged underground and the wife tries her best but could not pull her husband up. She gets fast into the car and closes the door before being attacked by the gigantic creature. Being reassured the danger is over, in an instant, the whole car is swallowed into the ground. Val and Earl try to find help after warning the residents, but find the phone lines are dead. They head back out on the road, only to find the earlier attack on the two workmen has caused a rock slide, blocking the only road out of town. Out of sight, a snake-like creature wraps itself around their truck's rear axle. It is then torn apart when Val stomps on the accelerator driving away. It is discovered by the shocked residents of the town when they return. After some discussion by the group of residents in the store, it is decided that Val and Earl should go for help and borrow horses to ride to Bixby. They are each given a gun to take as a precaution. On the way, they ride by the doctor's place to check on him and his wife, but they are nowhere to be seen. They hear music and are shocked to discover Dr. Wallace and his wife's buried vehicle near their trailer. As they ride on, an enormous burrowing worm-like monster suddenly erupts out of the ground, revealing the snake-like creature to be one of the worm's many tentacled tongues. Thrown from their horses, the terrified men run for their lives with the monster in close pursuit. The chase ends when the creature crashes through the concrete wall of an aqueduct, dying from the impact. Rhonda Lee Beck, a graduate student conducting seismology tests in the area, stumbles onto the scene. She deduces from previous readings that this wasn't the only creature and tells the men that there are three other worms in the area. Another one of the monstrous worms shows up and Rhonda, Val, and Earl take refuge on a large pile of boulders, half buried in the ground. Trapped on the rocks by the creatures lurking nearby, they spend the night there. At sunrise the next morning, they work out that the creatures hunt their prey by detecting seismic vibrations in the ground. The trio then find some discarded poles and use them to pole vault across from boulder to boulder to reach Rhonda's truck which is parked some distance away. They make it across and the creatures attack the car but they narrowly escape. After the three of them return to town, they meet back up with everyone else at the general store when suddenly all three remaining worms show up and attack the town. The small group is separated as they run off to hide everywhere they can. The main group in the store hear a sound outside and see that it is a young girl, Mindy. 
She is unaware of the creature's presence in town, and the sound of her pogo stick bouncing on the road lures one of them to her. Val rushes over and saves her just in time. In a panic to hide, Val climbs on the roof of his truck while Rhonda runs and falls over. Her legs get tangled in barbed wire from a broken fence as another one of the creatures moves in to attack her. Val grabs a weapon from the truck and runs over to help her. He buries a pickaxe in the creature's back which manages to stun it enough for him to help Rhonda to escape. Inside the general store, attracted by the sound of the old rumbling refrigerator, the worms attack again and kill owner Walter Chang, forcing everyone to take shelter and hide on the town's various rooftops. Meanwhile, survivalist couple Bert and Heather Gummer have driven home and contacted the general store by radio. In their basement, they have an armory of weapons, and the noise from one of their machines lures the creatures towards them. One of them breaks through the basement wall and attacks the couple. After a tense battle, they eventually manage to kill it by using a very big and powerful elephant gun. Val then warns them by radio that there are still two more of the creatures to worry about. So Bert and Heather take a cache of weapons and supplies up to their rooftop. In town, the two remaining worms start attacking the building's foundations. They knock over a trailer Nestor is standing on, allowing them to drag him under and devour him. Realizing they must leave town, Val tells Bert to come and rescue everyone in his truck but the creatures seem to be one step ahead and destroy the truck before they get a chance to leave. Left with no other options, Earl suggests they use his 30-ton Caterpillar truck loader with the semi-trailer attached to the rear that they can drag behind them. The only problem is it is quite far away, so Earl, Rhonda, and Miguel have to distract the monsters while Val makes a run for the loader. Val is almost there when the distraction fails and the creatures home in on the sound of Val's steps. He stops still just as both creatures burst from the ground, terrifyingly close to where he is standing. To distract the creatures, Rhonda breaks a water pipe and the sound of falling water draws them away from him. Val reaches the track loader and successfully hooks up the trailer and celebrates as he slowly makes his way around town, collecting the rest of the survivors before heading out over to get Bert and Heather. The gun-loving couple have been busy making homemade pipe bombs to aid their escape across the desert. With everyone safely on board, they head to a nearby mountain range where they will be safe from the creatures. Their escape plan is going smoothly when the group spots the creatures doing something strange far away in the distance. Out of nowhere, the loader falls down into a sinkhole trap that the worms created which disable the track loader. Using the sound from one of their homemade pipe bombs to briefly drive the creatures away, the survivors flee to some nearby boulders for safety. Now trapped on the boulders, the group begin to fight amongst themselves and begin to lose hope of escape. Then Earl gets an idea to trick the worms into swallowing one of Bert's pipe bombs. The strategy kills one worm, exploding its guts high into the air and trying out the same thing on the last remaining worm. However, the last one is not so easily fooled and it spits the pipe bomb back towards the survivors, forcing them to disperse as the explosion sets off and destroys all but one of the remaining bombs. In a final desperate attempt to survive, Val lures the final worm into chasing him to the edge of a cliff. He then throws and explodes the remaining pipe bomb behind it, frightening the worm into charging through the cliff face, where it plummets to its death on the rocks below. The group returns to town and calls in the authorities to begin an investigation, while Earl encourages Val to pursue a romantic relationship with Rhonda. Val stops her as she is leaving and the two embrace as the credits roll. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this, and don't forget to turn on your notifications, that really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.